Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'm going to be putting my tropical bed to, to sleep. As you can see the first of the frosts have already come and damaged it quite badly. We didn't have any frost until quite late in November. It's now right at the end of November so it's December next week and we're going to get some very hard frost soon so I need to make sure this is protected. But I'll show you a picture from just last week and you'll see the difference is massive. Basically we had a hard frost. The first frost that came was really late. Normally we get our first frost kind of September, October time, but this year it was late November and then it came as a really hard frost of minus four, minus five. So that really killed off nearly all of the vegetation that was here. Then we had some strong winds which has further damaged the leaves. So as you can see, all the banana leaves at the top are completely shredded from the wind and brown and crispy from the frost damage. Further down where they're a bit protected by the, the upper leaves, there's a little bit of greenery left on them. Now the hardiest of them all is the Moucha Bijou, which is this one here. As you can see, it has suffered the least amount of damage to its leaves. The lower leaves are almost intact. The upper leaves are kind of half uh, frost damaged, and the new rolled up leaves are actually fine. These are the Moucha Secumensis. These two taller ones, they've been damaged quite badly, but you can see the main trunk is absolutely fine. This is a Moussa Secumensis hybrid called a Helen's hybrid, and this one's not done too bad, maybe even slightly better than the Musa Secumensis, kind of hard to tell. And then we've got another Musa Secumensis hybrid down here, which is the Daz Giant. This one has also suffered quite badly from the frost. And then when it comes to the heady cheams, they haven't suffered too badly from the frost yet, but I'll be digging one of them up because I know that one doesn't do well in my garden. So we've got this one here, Gardarianum. You can see a little bit of frost damage there. The next hard frost, this will probably be completely blackened as well. And we've got the Wardii, which is surprising because it actually holds up to the frost better than the other two varieties. So you can see here, really minimal frost damage at all. In fact, we had a few warm days uh, just the last couple of days, and you can see some new flower buds coming out there as well. And these ones are starting to flower up again, so surprisingly frost hardy. But this one does the least well for me over winter, and I think the reason being is where the rhizomes are. So if I pan around to down here, you can see on this hardy ginger, that the rhizomes are right at the surface, in fact they're actually above the ground level, so these get badly hit by the winter frosts. Um, I find that if, if I leave these outside they don't do well at all. This whole section here was a small section that I transplanted in, uh, in spring. This small plant here was the one that I left outside. The stuff I left outside was much bigger than the one that I kept indoors, and you can see it's only a tiny plant compared with the huge amount of growth we got on the plant that I kept protected inside. So, Definitely going to dig up a section of this, take it inside. The rest of it is going to get a really deep mulch, try and protect it. The other heady cheam is this one, it's a Telstar 4. This has grown well this year, it overwintered quite well last year, and the, the tubers in this tend to be underground, or should say the rhizomes are underground, so they're fine. Other plants to take note of, my, um, my giant Paulonia here, that'll be completely frost hardy, so I don't need to worry about that. I'll just be cutting that back come springtime, just before it starts to grow. And then we've got a few other things like the calla lilies. The calla lilies, they're not frost hardy, but I find with enough mulch, they're normally fine underground, as long as it's really deep mulch. And then we've got my Santa Desia Hercules, which is a giant calla, calla lily. This one, it's frost hardy to about minus four, minus five. Then the leaves will be killed back. And once that frost comes and kills the leaves back, I'll then mulch around that as well to protect its tubers. Because that should be frost hardy if I can keep the tubers from freezing. So the only thing that will be left in this over winter in this bed is this Trachycarpus palm down here. That's hardy to about minus 15, minus 20. So I don't need to worry about protecting that. And you can see the begonias there, which have just been frosted back as well. They're actually hardy as well. So I don't need to worry too much about them as long as I keep them mulched. The top half dies back and they've got tubers underground which survive. So that's everything in the bed pretty much. I have also got a uh, castor oil plant and um, this one is a giant variety and surprisingly it did actually quite well and the top, top got frosted but the lower leaves are actually still okay so I might leave that today see how long it can survive see how much frost it can handle. So what I'm going to be doing is putting them all to bed. What I did last year because they were quite small plants they were all actually about the size of this one at the end here and I did actually get them all but one to overwinter okay. So what I'll be doing with them is the same as last year. And what I did is I built up some insulation towers. You can see them here. This is just using some PIR insulation. I had some left over. I had to redo the insulation in my loft. And this was the old one that I took out. I just made like a, a pillar. I, I glued them together uh, with bamboo dowels to keep them together. And also with expanding foam for insulation. And then I just put a lid on top of them as well and that covers up the banana trunk, keeps off the hardest of the frost but if I lose the stem 
it's not the end of the world, it's, it's the, the roots I need to really worry about. So if I can keep some stem height, that would be great because I can get bigger banana plants for next year. And that's what the insulation towers are for. But the main thing I do is just get loads and loads of mulch in the bed. So I've got a lot of compost and material I've been harvesting throughout the year. That will be going on to the bed, things like sunflowers and anything I've been growing over the year. Basically just like a layer of compost. Put that over the bed, keep it insulated. I've also got a pile of bark. I'll be putting the bark around the banana trees because I don't want them to rot. If I put something too fresh down, it could start to rot. I put woodier material around them. When it comes to the banana trees, the Musha Bazoo, what I'm going to do is actually leave the leaves on that, let the leaves fall down naturally. That will provide it a bit of extra protection to its stem. And I'll just be putting a big pile of leaves and kind of woody material and a bit of bark around the roots just to keep that well protected. All the other bananas, because they're a bit more sensitive, I think this year, even though I will lose some height in doing so, I'll try and protect the stems with the insulation towers. So I'll cut them down to about a metre in height, that's how tall the insulation towers are, and then I'll insulate them like I did last year. Now I would like to keep them at full height, and the one in my parents' garden, I will be doing that this year, because they're in a much milder location by the sea. I'll just let the, uh, the leaves naturally fall down. What tends to happen is the wind and the frost, it damages the leaves, and the leaves tend to fall down like this, and what they do is they hang down and they actually quite often reach down to the ground and they give a bit of extra protection in, in insulation from the hardest frost like that and in their mild coastal location they should actually be okay minus five minus six is about the maximum they get and their stem will be fine with that so i'll be just leaving one of my parents garden but stay here it gets quite cold so insulation towers lots and lots of mulch and then the rest of the bed the heady chiams, the hardy gingers, they'll be getting a thick, thick mulch just to make sure their tubers are protected. I'll be digging up the wardy eye one at the back there just because its rhizomes are well above ground and they won't survive if I left them even when they're mulched. And then the rest of them plants, as I say, like the hardy begonias and a few other things, they're all quite hardy at the root level as long as they're mulched. So a thick layer of mulch and they'll just, just fine. So I'm just going to get started now. I'll do what I'll do to begin with is I'll cut off all the excess foliage that I don't need leave the leaves on the Musa Bajou because I'm just going to leave that one to kind of weather it out itself. But certainly on the Sea Comensis and all the other bananas, I need to cut back the foliage, make some space. And then with the begonias as well, I'm just going to cut them and, and lay them flat on the ground. These actually have a lot of bulbules which grow in the stems and they'll become some of next year's plants. So that's part of the reason I like to leave these in place so I don't have them sprouting up all over the garden. You can see this little bulb you're here where this uh, this stem has, has snapped and they just break off like that and these little things they're just basically like mini bulbs and they will grow into some plants next year but the actual plant itself deep underground there's actually a tuber as well so the main plant will survive and that's just little seedlings that come up so I like to keep them in the same place to save them popping up all over the rest of my garden so I go ahead now and I'll start cutting things back making space for me to then get in and do the insulation tiles
So that's three of them nearly done. So I've done these two already. This one I've left just so in a bit more detail how I do it. So basically I take away all the mulch from the outside and then I push that up again. And what I'll do with these other ones is I will actually mound it higher with cut material. The thicker I can get it with material, the more insulation it will get. That anchors it in place a little bit. Then what I do is I pour in um, bark into the middle. That gives it a lot more insulation again. The only trade-off with that is it can cause some of the stems to rot. Now if it's a big stem and the outside rots, that's not an issue. The growing point's in the middle. It should be okay, but that is the trade-off. The more you insulate this, the less airflow, the more likely it could rot over winter. But if I don't put enough insulation in, the frost gets in there, it will definitely die. So it's just a bit of a trade-off. Depends how cold I think the winter will be. So with these ones, I'll also be cutting them down, just down to the height of this box. So I've got some stem um, protected, but there's no way I can protect this much stem, or at least not with the method I'm using at the moment. I'd have to get more insulation. But then what I do is I put the top on, and then I put a really heavy concrete slab on top. That's just to weigh it down, make sure the wind doesn't blow it away. And I'll probably put some bricks on top of those concrete slabs as well. Last year we had 100 mile an hour winds and they held firm even with 100 miles an hour winds. So we're doing the same again this year, make sure that they're protected from the wind. I don't want these getting blown off, the hard frost coming, or even blown off and then taken into someone's garden. So I say with this one I'll do the same, um, but the only thing is this one was too large. I couldn't get all the stems in, so I got the two main stems in and then a third minor one. But there is also a fourth small one here. That one I'll just cover up with some some uh, vegetation and or see if that survives or not it's not a big deal it's just a small little suit even if it gets frosted it'll probably regrow from the base again and we're not losing much stem height as that was never a big one and now i've only got three of these insulation towers i did have a fourth insulated box last year the banana that was covering rotted off and didn't too, do too well um, and i'm using the box for something else so i'm not using it this year so this one will actually be insulated a bit like the Musa Bazoo, but I'm just going to put extra insulation in. Now ideally I would have straw, some years I managed to get it from the farmers quite easily. I think this year maybe there's not as much going around or maybe they didn't grow as much barley this year so there's not as much as a waste product, but normally I would get some barley and I would put that straw in as well. This year I'm just going to go with whatever materials I have and hollow woody stems are really good. That's why straw is quite good because all the hollow stems, the more air spaces you can trap, the more insulation you'll get. So with this, I've got quite a lot of stems from my sunflowers. I'm going to pile them up here quite thick. And then I'll do what I did last year with the Musa Bazoo. And that lasted down to minus six, no problem last year. I'll be um, just filling in the gaps with some smaller material, probably wood chips or bark to help fill in any of the small gaps so there's not wind blowing through the, the insulation. And now it'll be interesting to see, last year was pretty mild, as I say, minus six I think was the coldest. I've already had minus four this year, although it was a very quick sharp frost and the short frosts don't really do much damage. It takes time for the cold to penetrate into the ground. Last year, as I say, we only had minus six, but we had about a week or two where the temperatures were around freezing or just below, so the frost could penetrate quite deep. Fortunately, it never got into the ground. The idea with this method is you insulate it thick and the, the frost will slowly penetrate into the ground, but if you have a thick enough layer, unless you get extremely cold weather or a really long, long, long freeze, the ground shouldn't fully freeze underneath. So ideally, I'm looking for about a foot of material that's insulating that will slowly freeze as the cold spell comes, but it will never get down to the root level. So that's the main goal here. If I keep the stems alive, that's a bonus because I can get extra height next year. The stems don't survive. As long as the roots are still there, the bananas will come back and they won't be set back too much. So I'm just gonna continue now, get a lot of woody material and insulate the bananas. And I also need to dig up part of this Hedychium wardii and then the rest of it. I'm actually gonna keep the leaves because they're still quite good. This one I cut down and mulched it with its own leaves and the banana leaves. This one, I say the leaves aren't frost damaged yet and it's starting to flower. So I might cut the flowers, take them inside and I'm gonna just section off a part of it and put that indoors and grow that inside because I find this really doesn't overwinter well here in Scotland.
So that's the bed now ready for winter. Now I would have filmed a bit longer last night but it got quite cold. It got just around freezing last night and the battery in the camera actually shut down so I wasn't able to film because it got too cold for the battery but um, hopefully the battery will last for this spell because it's again around about freezing. You can kind of tell how far north I am because it's it's only the end of November and so it's going to get darker as the days go on but it's three o'clock and the sun has actually just set so it's pretty early that we have the sunsets here. So that's it all ready for winter. What I did is I added, you can't really see it on this one because I put some more things on top. I added some Ansetti leaves. Now these are Ansetti ventricosum leaves. They're, um, I had two large Ansetti plants that I cut back recently. In fact there's one over there which is waiting to be put inside once I get some help put inside because it actually weighs about 50 kilograms. So it's incredibly heavy, very hard to lift by myself, especially as there's not any real branches or anything to really hold on to. Those leaf bracts will rip off if I pull on them. So I use those leaves, the reason being I thought it kind of acts like a roof, the rain or sheet off it. It could be an issue because it might actually trap some moisture, we'll see if it's going to be a good thing or not. Also it stops a lot of the airflow, it's a good barrier for that. But the main thing I went for is actually the leaf stems. You can see some of the, the cut ones here and cut ones there. There's actually lots of different compartments and those compartments inside the leaf are completely full of water so the idea of that is it's kind of sacrificial for water to freeze a lot of heat has to be pulled out of it because of the transition from a liquid to a solid there's a lot of thermal difference that it needs so the idea is as that freezes it takes a lot of the cold away and then that will slowly freeze through those layers hopefully it means that the bottom doesn't freeze. One thing I could have done, which I might do next year, is if I can remember to save enough water bottles. If I filled these towers with water bottles, that would do a similar thing. It would be kind of sacrificial water. That would freeze and the bananas wouldn't. The water in the water bottles probably freeze about zero degrees, but the, the stems on the bananas, because there's a bit of sugar in there and there's a little bit of salts as well, they'll probably freeze at like half a degree below freezing or my, maybe minus one. So the bottles will freeze first and they just kind of keep it around the freezing mark and I don't let it get much below freezing until all the water bottles are completely frozen solid. So that's always an option for next year. And as I say, it just does a similar thing with these stems. As they freeze, it just kind of sacrifices the, the leaves, or, or the dead anyway, but it will just freeze that instead of getting a deep freeze into the plant. And then this one, because this is a Cicamensis banana, I need extra protection, so I've just put some more cuttings on top. I had a load of dahlias and I also had some marigolds which were killed by the frost last week, so I put them on top and then some bark to hold it all down because we do get very strong winds and if the strong winds come I don't want this all to get blown all over the place, it needs to stay in position. So I think that's all from this update. I will be putting some bricks on top of these to just get, to give them a bit more weight, make sure they definitely stay in place. But this is be pretty much how it is now until spring. What will happen is the mounds around the banana plants will slowly rot down. This will be quite a slow process because for the rest of the winter it's too cold here in North Scotland for, for really any decomposition to occur. So these mounds won't change a huge amount. They might sink a little bit with the gravity and the hard frost as it damages the insetti leaves. They'll probably turn to mush and they'll sink a bit as well. And then around March, April, when it starts to warm up slightly, they'll start to really sink quite fast and start to rot. But it won't be such a big problem by then because that will be sinking down. It won't be giving as much protection. By that time of year, the hardest frost should have passed. So it'll be interesting to see how these do. Hopefully they'll all survive. I really want this one to survive because this is my best growing banana yet. This is the Helen's Hybrid. Um, and it's not quite as hardy as the Cicamensis, so hopefully that'll do fine. I know for sure the Musa Bajou will be fine, even if all the stems die off. The roots are pretty hardy on that. Not just the other varieties. I'm not so sure about whether they'll survive or not. So that's all for this video, and I'll see you guys in spring when I'll be unwrapping them, seeing if they've survived, and hopefully they'll take off again like this last year and have a really good display, or have this full of lost plants again.